What's up, guys? I've been thinking of making a cat guide for a while, but I put it off because I'm playing on the Japanese server, so I felt like it would be a little bit hard to understand if I was showing my own cats as examples. But I no longer care, so I'm just gonna do the best I can between showing the wiki page and my own cattery. In my last video, I received this comment. I'm not sure where this wonderful person got the impression that I dislike complainers, when in the video itself I asked for people to come and complain in the comments. I love me a good moan, and I'm sure everyone else does too, so feel free to complain all you want. For this video, I predict that there will be something about how cats are too much work to be worth the trouble, or that the skill reroll system, not being able to lock skills you want when you reset, makes no sense. Maybe having bad luck with cats in general in terms of getting a good base, or resetting for a good talent. Or, if we're really lucky, maybe we'll even get somebody complaining about capitalism. I am not a licensed therapist, but pretty much the next best thing, so... Feel free to write in the comments about any kind of troubles you may be having. Okay, now let's get started with the guide. The path of the... Catmeister... is a lifelong pursuit, with no end goal in sight, as opposed to fleet tech, which is just the simple matter of leveling all the ships to level 120. And the reward at the end? Well, it's definitely not even close to being worth what you put in. You get bonus stats exceeding the max amount of stats you can get from fleet tech for a given whole class, especially in the case of submarines. Let's see how much I'm getting out of a pair of submarine cats. 40 reload, which can make or break some submarine loadouts that are tight on oxygen, 90 torpedo stats, and 3% damage and another 4.5% torpedo stat. Additionally, submarine cats also increase hunting range in campaign and oxygen and operation siren. So without a doubt, they are a worthy investment. I would go as far as to say that if the Titanic submersible had brought along this pair of cats, then they probably wouldn't have imploded. Now, what about the surface fleet? For this pair of carrier cats, we're looking at 84 aviation, 6% damage, and 40 reload. But unfortunately, some of the talents do not affect light carriers, so they do get fewer bonuses. You can see that the total is well above that of max carrier fleet tech. If that is not enough to convince you, then what about the little pause on the tiles in Operation Siren, where you send your cats out to retrieve loot? They scale off the rarity and levels of your cats, so if you send a pair of two level 30 SSR cats, you'll have a much higher chance of getting some super rare loot, such as C6 Abyss coordinates, Rainbow Equipment Blueprint, and if you're really lucky, another SSR cat box. To what degree levels and rarity increase the drop rate? I have no idea, but it says so in game, so they wouldn't lie to you, would they? Of course, all of this sounds amazing, until I tell you that it took 4 years and probably 100 million coins by this point sank into rerolling cats. The real reason to care about cats that they don't tell you about is that the Azurlian gacha just doesn't hit quite the same. Gambling addicts needed another outlet, which is where the Meowficers came in. So if you're a beginner player, or just don't care about Meowficers yet, wherever you may be, start by filling up your cat lodge with any SSR cats you get and just feed them every day. You'll be able to use them as fodder when you do care and your future self will thank you. Also, as these cats level up. Regardless of their talents and skills, you'll be able to acquire better loot from Operation Siren. Now, let's talk about cats themselves. SSR cats spawn with 4 talent points, while SR cats spawn with 2, and rare spawn with 1. For the most part, you should be using SSR cats because talents are more important than skills, with a couple of exceptions. Being Edelweiss for submarines, SR carrier cats, and SR destroyer cats. For Edelweiss, the reason is because there is only one SSR submarine cat in steel, and Edelweiss gives hunting range and oxygen in Operation Siren, which Growl does not. Besides Edelweiss who is required for her skills, when I say that an SR carrier cat is needed to form a pair, you can by all means use an SSR cat like Antenna with all carrier talents instead, but the spawn pool for other SSR cats don't have carrier talents so it will be extremely unlikely that you will be able to raise one like that. Steel and Adelweiss are the most important cats in terms of skills, as they actually increase the potency of submarines by increasing hunting range and preemptive strike damage in campaign, 
as well as oxygen capacity and operations are. For all the other cats, talents trump abilities. Now, let's talk talents. If you are relatively early in the game, focus your resources on uncapping ships, equipment, retrofits, and research. I said that SSR cats spawn with 4 talent points, but if they happen to spawn with a unique talent, the unique talent can replace a regular talent that would have spawned with 2 points, leading to a 3 point total spawn. This is not a huge issue, but your cat will be missing 1 talent point in the end. A lot of regular talents affect just one whole class, and some unique talents affect the entire fleet. Obviously, the talents that affect the entire fleet would have more value provided that the stats they provide are actually useful. Three unique talents that are really nice to have are Flame, which is almost always the best talent regardless of where you are in the game, and then Mountain and Forest, which are very good at defensive talents for when you're progressing through campaign but not very popular later on when survivability is no longer as much of an issue. You should look out for cats that have these talents, but do not go out of your way to hunt for them. Destiny is not as good as Flame, but if we take a look, 10 firepower for your whole fleet is equivalent of 5 points in destroyer firepower, which obviously you can't get, but the maximum of 3 will only give you 6 firepower. 3 points in cruiser firepower, 1 point in battleship firepower, all combined into one. And that is not to mention the torpedo and aviation it provides as well. However, I don't think it is as impactful in assisting you in campaign as flame, mountain, and forest. The rest of the rainbow talents are not that great. Typical common good talents are any talents that increase the primary damage stat of the whole class. For example, fire talents for battleships, aviation talents for carriers, torpedo talents for submarines and destroyers, and so on. Reload is also very good for submarines and the main fleet. But accuracy talents are quite bad because their value per point is extremely low. Even without unique talents, having a couple cats that give firepower and reload for battleships for example, will give you about as much of an increase as having an extra auxiliary slot. Let's take a look at how much firepower we can get from regular battleship talents. So we can get 16 from artillery, and then another... Th 16 from officer, totaling to a 32 per cat, and 64 across 2, which is already more than a white shell. Not to mention that the stats of the cats can also increase your firepower. There are also unique talents, which we can see on the right side here, which are better than the regular talents for their respective whole classes. Since there is only one for each whole class though, you're generally going to want some regular talents as well to go along with the unique talents. There are a few different potential spawn tiers that could be worth investing in. Let's take a look at Oscar's starting pool, as Oscar has one of the best starting pools out of all the cats. As a new player, you could get something like Flame, along with two relatively useless talents, such as Cruiser Reload and Battleship HP. This is a decent placeholder and you can use it and level it to feed it to a better cat later on, but don't spend coins to reroll it. Another possibility is something like 2 points in Artillery and 2 points in Officer. This is technically not as good as Fire with 2 garbage talent out of the box, but as you raise it, it will have higher potential as there are no wasted points. You should look out for one of these types of spawns as your first cat. Oscar is for battleships, so obviously you will want Bishamaru with aviation and reload for carriers, and Steel with torpedo and reload for submarines, and so on. Prioritize raising your main fleet cats, but if you happen to come across a good vanguard cat, then keep them around for later. The next tier after that is spawning with one relevant unique talent along with other relevant talents. For example, Soulful Warrior or Flame along with Battleship Artillery and Battleship Officer. Here is the Bishamaru equivalent for carriers. As you can see, it spawned with Flame, Officer, and Aviation, and a spawn like this is 100% worth investing in. All you need to do is roll Ace Pilot, and you pretty much got yourself the best possible carrier cat. I wouldn't bank on getting a spawn like this though, but if you do get one, congratulations. 
Looking at this spawn, you can see that it has 4 total points, including the unique talent. However, it is possible for the unique talent to have replaced the 2 point talent rather than some 1 point talent which we can't see. In that case, this cat will have just 3 points, which will leave it 1 point short of ideal. It will still be an amazing cat, but just missing a tiny bit of stats. The final mythical spawn is 2 unique talents with a relevant non-unique talent. I have gotten one such Takemaru with Tireless Warrior and Destiny, but never flame with Ace or Soulful Warrior. For obvious reasons, this is the best possible tier of spawn, but I wouldn't bank on getting this ever in your entire career of playing this game. To summarize, as a new player, prioritize Steel, Adelweiss, and Mainfleet Cats, ideally with the talents that I just mentioned. If there's anything you're wondering about that I did not explain thoroughly, then read through the wiki page first before asking your questions. Now, it's time for me to address the degenerate gambling addicts. Which does not include me, of course. So you have a bunch of excess gold lying around and you want to min-max some cats, you say. Or maybe you don't even have gold, and are still digging through your pockets to find some change for boxes and rerolls. Conventionally, most would assume that the approach is to wait for a cat with one unique spawn and two relevant talents, then level up and reset until you get the second unique talent that you're looking for. For instance, you get a Bisha spawn with flame, two aviation talents, and then you're rerolling for ace pilot. You might think that rerolling for two unique talents with no unique spawn is too difficult, while waiting for a cat which spawns with two of the unique talents that you want is impossible. However, consider this. The entire time you were waiting for a good spawn, you could have been resetting the cats that you have for a double unique roll. Yeah, it'll cost you way more gold, but in the pursuit of greatness, that is irrelevant. Look at this justice. What do you think it spawned with? Torpsoul? Nope, just two regular old talents. If I didn't put my head down and just reset it every day without thinking until I achieved this result, I would probably never have gotten a destroyer cat this good. And here are a couple more examples of rolling two unique talents from leveling up. Another thing to consider is that even if you roll a unique talent with two relevant talents, if you happen to get a 3 point spawn, like here, this cat will always have one less talent point than a cat with no unique spawn but 4 points in relevant talents. As a cat connoisseur like myself, I find this to be completely unacceptable. Stop chasing your white whale unique talent spawn with two relevant talents and a 4 point spawn, and just start resetting your cats today. That's what cats are all about. And now, let's take a look at some of the best possible end products you can have. A conventionally perfect cat will have something like Flame, a unique relevant talent like Ace or Soulful Warrior, and then 3 other relevant damage boosting talents. But this type of cat is not the best in every situation. Mountain is a solid option that would probably make your life a lot easier in chapter 14 than that 14 points in aviation. There is a good chance that if you're using some good destroyers in your vanguard, Torpedo Soul could contribute more than a couple extra points in firepower or even destiny. Or perhaps, as cruisers like Hindenburg and Plymouth continue to raise the level of Vanguard damage ceiling, you might want to invest in a hybrid cat like this. Also, maybe you're an EX player and you have a battleship cat that has all the firepower talents but no reload, and that reload talent could shave off an extra second in your clear. Now, you need to get another one with max reload talent. Speaking of EX players, 
You probably want an antenna with all the aviation reload talents, as well as wind's alacrity, as antenna can actually get the Eagle Union faction buff, which has reload and can potentially shave one second off of Ranger's airstrike. If you have gotten into this territory, then you have gone too far, and welcome to my world. In any case, it is actually a myth that one cat can be best in slot for all scenarios for a whole class. Whether Destiny, which is worth as much as a lot of other non-unique talents combined, would be worth more than something more specialized like Torpedo Soul, is entirely dependent on the situation. Also, if you're using a mixed battleship and carrier fleet, or god forbid, light carriers, which don't receive ace pilot or carrier officer, all of a sudden that ace pilot or soulful warrior don't look as nice anymore. Not to mention the addition of Kearsarge, who probably wants the eco union faction buff more than anything. In any case, I could go on forever about the hyper niche esoteric cat min maxing that is probably best avoided. I hope you were able to take something away from the video. Thanks for watching, and see you in the next one.